60% of you are um, in this session because it is your first online, you're registered for your first online class this semester. So kudos to you um, for getting into uh, this webinar and taking this extra step before classes officially begin uh, here just in a few days to uh, learn about how to be successful in an online course and uh, what it's going to take to do that and sort of how to navigate in those sorts of things. So there are three keys to success that we're going to reinforce during today's presentation. Um, and first of all is just the reading in an online class. In an online class, you will have a lot of different kinds of media and things that you're exposed to. Your faculty member may hold webinars like this one with you. They may. They don't all do that, but they may do that. Um, they may post videos or audio announcements in their class. Uh, they may post additional sorts of images and graphics and other kinds of media, but the predominant overarching thing you are going to do this semester to learn is read. Um, so it is very important that you book time for yourself as you uh, are learning to manage your time, and we're going to talk about that one in just a second, that you are um, giving yourself plenty of time to read all of the material and all of the information that you need to do that. You need to read it carefully, and if you don't understand it, you need to ask questions when you're not understanding it. And that is a nice segue into our second tip, um, because you are responsible for your time in an online class, it is important that you do not procrastinate. I was reading something yesterday about online classes and, and student tips for success, and um, probably my favorite one out of that was there is no such thing as catching up in an online class. And I don't know about you, but uh, right now, in particular at my house, I've got a lot of catching up to do on housework. Um, and I don't know about you, but I tend to never get to those things quite as quickly as I should um, because I'm really procrastinating them. They're not fun, and I don't want to clean the ceiling fans. Um, so it's really important for online classes that you make a plan for yourself every week for how you're going to study, how you're going to get your work done. And we're going to show you and talk about that all the way through this session um, and give you some tips and tricks for that. And then finally, one of the goals of this session is to, to encourage you to take advantage of all of the resources you have available to you at, at, as an online student. Um, hopefully some of you are also taking traditional classes on campus, so you may be coming on campus anyway, but we know about 10 to 20 percent of students who are taking an online class from us each semester, that's the only way they're learning with us this, in that particular semester. You're not alone. Um, just because you may be sitting at your own home or sitting at work or at a library doing your class, you are not alone. There are lots of resources available to you, and we're going to point those out to you uh, throughout the webinar today. So those are three really important keys to success, and you're going to hear, us, uh, hear me reiterate those during the session. So I want to give you a quick overview of what we're going to do today before we dive into Blackboard and start to take a look at it. Um, first, we're going to go over basic navigation in Blackboard, some of the different features and functionality that's in Blackboard. We're going to give you a tour of a class, show you how to submit a discussion assignment, show you a discussion board, an assignment, a quiz, um, and talk sort of all through the session about time management tips for online students. That's the thing when we talk to students um, during the class, that's the thing they always say is the hardest for them is just understanding how they're going to be successful in the class because you're managing your own time for it. Um, and then again, you're not alone. You've got lots of resources available to you, so we're going to point out where you can get help with technology, where you can get help with registration and billing issues if you need it, um, where you can get help with your actual classwork, whether it's writing assistance or tutoring assistance, um, and then point out some of the free tools that are available to you. We have um, we're going to make a recording of today's session available to you, and I'll show you where we're going to put that link for that recording. Um, it may not be today's specific session, but we will make a recording available of one of this, this week's sessions. Um, and I'll show you where that is in a little while. But we also have a couple of handouts that are available to you. They're already available to you. Um, they are in the handouts section on um, GoToMeeting. You should see those over on the, I think it's on the right-hand side of your screen, typically. Uh, one is called Getting Started Web Links, and the other one is Tips for Student Success. Uh, the Getting Started Links page is just a list of all of the links that we're going to sort of show you and go over today. Um, Kathy's going to help me out and put those in the chat panel as we're going along. You don't need to follow along in terms of like doing what I'm doing on your screen. You can just watch for today, but this is a nice handy reference list of all of those links so that you have them in one place. Um, and then we also have just a, a really great list of tips for student success. And, and folks like Jennifer and Aaliyah and Rhonda 
Rita and Shirley, who are on the call with us today, helping to answer your questions. They put their heads together. They've been doing this work for a long time, working with online students. And they, along with some of our faculty and some of our students, have kind of come up with this list of, here are some things you need to do. If you're going to be a successful online student, these are the things you need to do. So we've got that summary list available for you. And you can download those or print them off at any time during today's session. And finally, after the webinar, again, you're not alone. There's lot, there are lots of resources available for you. First of all, you're going to get an email um, pretty quickly after today's session ends. It's usually within five or ten minutes. It'll come to your Ivy Tech email address um, or whatever email address you used to register for this session. And some of you didn't use your Ivy Tech address which is OK. Um, but you'll get it at whatever email account you registered for this session. Um, and we'd ask that you would definitely fill out the survey link that's at the bottom of that email. That just helps us know if we're doing a good job with these webinars and helps us to plan for the future. I would tell you to keep that email, though. Some of your instructors will ask for it at the beginning of the semester. Um, and they may even give you credit for attending. Now, not all of them do. In fact, I'd say most of them don't. But just in case, nice thing to have it um, to prove that you attended the webinar and uh, successfully stuck around with us through that session. Um, and then I would encourage you to watch the front page of Blackboard, and I'm going to transition over here to Blackboard and show you what I'm talking about um, for information on future webinars. So give me just a second to change my uh, screens, and I'm going to minimize that because I'm not sure what I actually changed in it, and get Blackboard over here on the screen with you. You can see my baby elephants there for a second, and then there we go. You should see the Blackboard screen now. So this is our main Blackboard screen. I've already logged into Blackboard, um, but you would log in using your Campus Connect username and password, the exact same one that you use to access those resources. I'm going to point out a couple of things here on the main page before we dig into one of our classes. And first of all is that link that I was, or that area that I was talking about where you can watch for information about additional training sessions that we have available, as well as other news and updates. And that's this area right over here on the right um, that is called Ivy Tech News and Updates. We post information in here about training and resources. We post information in here about when Blackboard might be down at different times during the semester that we know about. Um, as well as if we add new tools or new features to Blackboard during the semester, we will post those here. So if it's there, it's really important for you. We also try to get things out to you through Campus Connect announcements and email and Facebook and all those sorts of things. We try to over-communicate a little bit, which I know can get a little daunting. Um, but I encourage you to watch those. But those training sessions will always be announced right here um, and available to you to register. This is also, um, as I mentioned, we're going to put a YouTube video link up of one of uh, the recordings of these sessions. And this is where you're going to find that link. So you can uh, see that uh, later on in the semester if you want to come back and review that. I would encourage you, we still have several sessions of this webinar going on um, this week as well as next week. So if you have friends or family members who are taking online classes with Ivy Tech, or a lot of students tell us this is just a great webinar to take just to sort of get back in the swing of school. Um, so if you want to encourage them to, to register, they can still register here using this Getting Started Online for Students link. So you can still register for that. Um, we had a couple folks in last night's session who asked if they could come back and watch again. So if you want to watch again, you, we still got more sessions. You can come hang out with us again at some point. Uh, while we're here on this main screen, I just want to point out a couple of things to you. Um, Blackboard is divided up into um, these boxes, which are modules, um, as well as tabs up here across the top. Um, and the tabs, the one I want to point out to you today, I would encourage you, you have your library available to you to use during the semester. And that'll open up in a different page. And you click your campus, and then that'll take you into your library resources. You also have, though, this Click for Help tab. Now, I have faculty rights in Blackboard, so I have two tabs right here for students. Yours would just open up right to the Student Help tab. We have a lot of information here for you um, about uh, different things. We have these webinars listed again. We have information about our Blackboard mobile tool tool and our Blackboard Instant Messenger tool. As we were preparing, or you all were coming into the webinar, several of you were on real early with us, which is great. Um, and we asked you if you were using a mobile device. And about 40% of you said that you, one of the ways you were going to access your class this semester 
was by a mobile device. Um, and I was really excited because it looked like Android was winning, and I'm a big Android fan. Um, so we do offer the Blackboard Mobile Learn app available to you free of charge. And it's really important. We have a few students every semester who say when they go to their app store and they try to download the Blackboard Mobile app, it says it's going to charge you. It should not do that. So if you get that, immediately call the help desk. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in just a second. But the Blackboard mobile app is free for you to download. Um, and it's, it's free for you to use. But I'm going to remind you that your messaging and data rates apply. So if you're watching video content and that kind of thing, if, if you're like me and you stream a lot of stuff, you know that racks up data really, really fast. So I really encourage you to think about making sure you're on Wi-Fi um, and watching your data usage very, very carefully if you're using the Blackboard Mobile Access. We don't want you to get data charges that you're not expecting. Um, and we were wondering as we were watching those poll results, uh, we were talking on the phone before the webinar started, uh, we were wondering if any of, anybody's going to try to do their entire class via a mobile phone. If you are, just type a note to us in the question pod just so we know that. That would be uh, interesting for us to know. We don't encourage that, by the way, but we'd love to know if anybody's going to try it and sort of any strategies or tips for success you might have. The other tool on this page I'm going to point out to you is our Blackboard Instant Messaging tool. Um, this Instant Messaging tool allows you to interact um, immediately with your faculty and other students in your class who also have registered for a Blackboard Instant Messenger account. We call it Blackboard IM, so I'm trying really hard to use all the words, but uh, this is just plain old school sort of chat, instant messaging, kind of like we're doing with you today in the question pod, live, interactive, if folks are online with it. Um, but it is free to you as a student, um, and many of our faculty make really good use of it. So I'd encourage you, if your faculty member uses it or recommends it, for you to check it out. Even if that faculty member doesn't, though, if you want to work with other students in the class, it's a great way for you guys to connect with each other as well. So both of them are good tools. Um, while we're here, I'm going to point out one other help resource. You'll notice this big green box that's here, um, and that is our Ivy Tech Answer Center and also our help desk. So we have um, both a, 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 a answer center for questions about registration status, billing, payment, financial aid, all of those sorts of things, and that's available at the phone number 1-88-IVY-LINE, 1-888-IVY-LINE, sorry, I missed an 8 in there. Um, as well as our technical support help desk. And that is for any kind of computer or Blackboard issue that you're having. Um, they can help you with that. They're, again, they're the go-to resources if you have trouble with the Blackboard mobile app or if you're having any issues with Blackboard or anything like that. They should be your first call, um, 188-IVY-LINE. And the technical support one is option number four. If you want to jump right straight through that one, um, you can go straight to that. So you'll see we have a, a banner ad for that. It's pretty much on every page in Blackboard. You'll see it sort of all over the place. Um, but encourage you to use those resources if you need to. Kathy's also put in uh, to the chat box both the phone number as well as if you click on this banner ad anywhere that you see it, it will pop out to our um, online support center. And again, this is for those questions about registration, billing, financial aid, any of those sorts of things. You can um, search it, and it's actually a pretty friendly search. If I type for like add class, uh, which is something a lot of students want to do about this time of year. Um, I come up with, for some reason, I come up with how to drop a class first, but then I have how do I add a class, and I click on that, and you'll see that it will walk you right through instructions on how to do that with links and all of those things to get to that. You can um, also put in a ticket, so if you don't find the answer to your question using the search tools, or maybe you don't have time to sit on the phone right now, you can create a ticket with them and somebody will get back to you very, very quickly. But again, I really encourage you to use those resources. They're fantastic. I use them as an, um, as an employee. Um, I call the help desk sometimes to get answers to my questions, and um, I take classes, so I use the, the answer center as well for that purpose. So uh, both great resources. All right. So that's a little mini tour of just sort of around Blackboard. While we're on the screen, I'm going to show you one other tip. I know several of you are first time new online students to Ivy Tech and to college in general. Welcome to you. We are really excited you are here. Um, your Blackboard is going to probably be really, really clean. You can see I have about 10 courses in here. And this is pretty average if you've been here maybe two or three semesters. You can actually clean that up quite a bit. And you do that using this little gear icon right here. You can click on that, 
and it's going to take you over to another screen that will allow you, I can actually show and hide different courses. So let's say I want to um, hide this test course that I have. I just click that, and when I submit and I come back over here, I will see that that course is now missing. It's now starting with my test grade center course, which is a different one. So if you've been around with us as a student or a faculty or staff, we know faculty and staff are sometimes on these webinars as well, um, for a while and you want to clean that module up, you can certainly do that. Um, but we do keep your classes for you for two years um, so that you have um, the ability to uh, see those classes for um, up to two years and go back in and review your work. So, um, and I see somebody's uh, been on, uh, had some high school classes online and those sorts of things. If those were through Ivy Tech, you may very well see those here, so you might want to hide those. You don't have to, but it's some people really like to keep one semester at a time and keep that clean, so definitely your option. All right. We are going to go into a class, which I know is the part most of you are the most excited for, and take a look at this. Now, um, this is basically the same psych, if you're taking Psych 101 this semester, this is basic your, basically your class, but to make sure that I can show you everything that I want to show you in one of these demos, it is a little bit different. So if you're taking Psych 101 and when you get in the class, you're like, well, it looks different than what it looked like when she was doing that demo, it's going to because we've modified this version just a little bit just to have a few other things to show you so you get a full experience. Um, first of all, I'm going to um, show you just a quick tour around the course using the course menu. And before I dive into that, I almost forgot this last night, um, two things. First of all, and I see that Greg actually just answered the question that I was getting to, um, and that is when are your classes going to show up in Blackboard? Because some of you have nothing in there yet. Um, and that is that they will come into Blackboard um, three days prior to the actual course start date. So for most of us, our courses start this coming Monday, um, and that means that your course is going to show up sometime during the day, usually on Friday, and it's usually about midday on Friday. Um, it takes a long time. There are about 40,000 sections that we that the computer turns on for us, so it takes a little bit of time for that, but it should be sometime by midday on Friday. If you have a class that starts, maybe you have a second eight-week class, or you have a class that starts at 12 weeks, um, whatever, it's going to show up three days before that actual class start date. So if you don't see anything yet, no cause for alarm. As long as you're registered, that's all that needs to happen. Three days prior, you should see those courses. The other thing that I want to show you is that it's really easy um, to lose this menu for these courses, and that can freak a lot of people out. It still freaks me out sometimes when I do it. Um, right up here to the left-hand side of the title of the course, there's a little drop-down arrow, and if I just click that, it ends up collapsing that menu. And you can see that now that that menu has disappeared on the left-hand side. Um, and that it can really freak you out, and it's really easy to do by accident when you first click in and click on a screen. So to make it show again, just click that little gray arrow again, and that menu will pop right back out for you. So um, just something to be aware of. It happens to everybody, um, and everybody forgets that, that that happens sometimes. So don't freak out if you lose the menu. Just got to click that arrow again. One other tip, if you're taking more than one class this semester, a really quick shortcut for you is um, just up above where that menu is, there's a little uh, home button that's right to the left of the title of that page, right to the left of the announcements area. And if you click that drop down arrow next to that home button, this will let you move back and forth between the most recently visited classes. So if you're taking more than one class a semester, this semester, that's a great way to quickly read through, okay, I want to read all the announcements for all my classes. Then I want to go check all my messages, and then you can sort of focus in on one class if you need to. But if you're checking in uh, to your class, it's a great tool to do multiple classes at the same time. So before I get into the tour, let's talk about how often you need to log in and just sort of general course structure. Um, every semester, students say, do I have to log in at a certain day and time? Any of those things? Not typically. Most of our online classes, there is not a specific day or a specific time that you need to be logged in at any point in the semester. Why I say not typically, a lot of instructors do offer things like webinars or office hours online or things like that. And those will be scheduled at specific times and you can log in and you can actually interact with them kind of like this or maybe even talk to them on the phone or, or via the computer. So 
there may be some time specific things, but not that. However, you do have due dates, and they're almost every single week, in general, and generally there's more than one every week per class. So you're going to have to plan your work to make sure that you're meeting those deadlines in that course um, in order to be successful in the course. Um, how often do you need to log in is the other question we get asked. And um, my favorite answer is the more often you do, the better off you're going to be. Um, however, what we see is um, students who are most successful are logging in every day or every other day at a minimum. Um, we do have students who are successful who log in um, you know, a couple of times a week. I've seen a few students be able to do it because they're really good planners and they just know this is just the way they have to do it, where they have to, they have to do all their work one day a week. I've seen it work. I don't recommend it. Um, and you have to be incredibly disciplined and incredibly well planned to make that work well for you. So I really recommend make a plan for yourself. Um, you know, Spend an hour or so every day in your online class, and you're going to stay right on top of things, and you're just going to make progress through it all the way through. Just remember, the fewer times you log in, the more time at one day you have to spend on that class. Um, so students who do all their work on one or two days during the semester, they're spending four to six to eight hours on their class in one, at one time. Let's talk a little bit more about how much time to budget in your online class as we get into the calendar and those sorts of things. But those are um, always some questions we get. So let's take a quick tour here. Uh, we come into class on the announcements screen, um, and that uh, provides some quick updates. This is where your instructor is going to give you those sorts of things they would say if they were uh, talking to you from the front of the classroom, just like I am now. They would be typed in an announcement, or you can see they can add videos and audio and those sorts of things to them if they want to, so you may have a lot of different media in those. Then we're going to go over to course information, and this is where we're going to come back to, and we're going to spend a lot of time uh, for ourselves this this in this webinar, um, but you'll see a lot of information here, your instructor's information, the syllabus, the course calendar, um, as well as some other information. So you'll see all of that here. Class sessions is where you're going to do the bulk of the work for the course. We're going to spend quite a bit of time in this section of the course as well um, as we're digging through the webinar today. And then discussions are where you're going to go to actually have um, discussions. And they're not live discussions. They're what we call asynchronous discussion. Big word. You don't necessarily have to remember that. Um, but it means that I can log in right now and I can post a response. And then uh, Kathy, my, my friend and colleague here, she can log in at 10 o'clock tonight. She can read what I wrote and post a response back to me. Um, so we don't have to do it live, but we are having an ongoing discussion um, that, we, that we can all participate in. You can track your progress in the course using the grades button. And you can see I have completed one whole assignment in this course. I did not do very well on it last night. I'm going to try to do better today um, when I post my, um, my second uh, quiz here today. But you can see all of my grades. You can see um, everything. You can use these filters at the top to look through your different graded items. I have one item that's been graded. Um, I have several items that have not yet been graded and that are upcoming. Um, and I have nothing right now that has been, oh, I do have one. I have submitted one discussion board that has not yet been graded. Um, so I know that my instructor has it. Um, she just hasn't graded it yet. Okay. So grades are where you can keep track of your progress in the course. We also have a section in every course called resources. And there's a lot of different things in the resources area of the course. Um, Every course differs just a little bit. The things you're going to find in resources in every course, um, first of all, we have this um, student resources for Blackboard and online learning issues. I'm going to click on that for just a second. This takes you out to um, a great page managed by um, some folks up at our Fort Wayne campus. I believe. Um, and they have a, a tremendous amount of information here. They have how-to videos. They have some FAQs and other information available to you. So a lot of really great resources there that are available to you um, as those videos load. Each one of these videos um, is a, sort of a mini video on the, the topics that I'm going to go through today. Um, and as we play one of them really quickly, you can see that each one of them is closed captioned. So if you're um, in, in a class or in a meeting or someplace and you want to read the content but not actually uh, listen to it, you have that option. So that's a great resource available to you. Again, that's under the resources area in Blackboard. It's that student resources button. 
Um, we also, again, have another link to our library. I pointed out we have the library resources up here. Um, at the top of Blackboard, we have the library resources here. You also can access the library through Campus Connect. So you do not have to come to campus to use our library services. Our library services are available to you online. Um, we have a fantastic online library. So all of your research needs can be done via our online library in, in most cases. Um, and then finally, we have our um, Ivy Tech Hippocampus site. It's kind of a funny name, um, but the Hippocampus tool um, provides um, free videos that are tutorial videos for you in um, all of the subjects that are listed here on the left. Um, a couple of great things about this. First of all, it does include uh, videos in all of these different subject areas. Um, so if I want to go look at a video on English, I can uh, find that. And there are lots and lots of resources down here. If you look down here, there's tons of them. As you can see, it just goes on and on and on forever. Um, and all of those resources are available to you free of charge. You can also um, access this from anywhere. So if you have, the, the videos are not just college level, they actually go from, I think it's grade five, all the way up through doctoral level work. Um, and so this is a great resource if you have kids, or like me, nieces and nephews, or grandkids, or whoever that are struggling with topics in school themselves, this is a great resource you can share with them and share the power of learning with them. Um, so we really encourage you to do that. would love to have you use that more this semester. Uh, we also have here, um, in addition to all the resources under the resources area, we have another help site um, that has some uh, great, really quick tips on computer setup. Um, and you can see there's a handout as well as a video for each one of these. Uh, we also have videos about different things in Campus Connect. Um, as well as Blackboard. And I'm going to go back to the Campus Connect one for just a second and show you that. Now, Campus Connect is, and I'm going to pull it up on my screen here. There we go. Campus Connect is where you go to register for your classes, to pay, you can pay your bill, um, you can pay for additional printing resources if you're using your print allowance on campus, um, you can apply for scholarships, update your address and phone information, all those sorts of things. You can see announcements over here on the right hand side. It's also where you go to access your Gmail account, your student Gmail account. Um, which again, that is where all of your communication with your faculty needs to occur. So uh, one thing about online classes, your faculty is going to require that you use your Gmail account for that. Um, and so you may want to uh, make a regular habit out of checking that every day. Um, but also in Campus Connect, you can download Microsoft Office for free. It's one of the great benefits of being a student at Ivy Tech or a faculty and staff member. I use it as well at home. You get access to Microsoft Office for free. You can have it on up to five devices. It works on Windows, on Mac. It works on your mobile. We have the mobile platform as well. Um, it's the full Office 365 as well as um, the current the last two current versions of Office, if I remember correctly. So if you have a class that requires that you use Office 2013 as opposed to the Office 365 or Office 2016, you can still download that for free. Um, and so this guide that is here on the resources page, oops, sorry, this guide that is here on the resources page um, will walk you through that process. And again, remember if you have difficulty with that, you can call the help desk, the 1-888-IVY-LINE, option number four, and they will also help you with that. So that, again, was available through our help button. And then just a reminder, you can download your Microsoft Office for free through Campus Connect. So it's a, it's a huge benefit of being a student at Ivy Tech or a faculty and staff member. It's one of my favorite benefits. Um, we also have here in the last section of our course template, uh, we have our uh, messages and email. And we'll explain those a little bit more. But your faculty member is likely going to choose one of these. So you'll probably only see one of these per class. Um, and you'll need to make sure that you're aware of how that faculty member wants to communicate with you. So with that, we're going to go back to course information and spend just a little bit of time here and uh, take a look at some of the things here. Because reading, remember, one of the most important tips we have for you this semester is to read, 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 read. And the first thing I would do in every class I was enrolled in online, that very first day I get access, probably on Friday afternoon or Friday evening, 
because that is the kind of life I have on Friday night. I would sit and get ready for my classes. Um, I would log in, I would go to course information, and I would read through all the information in there, get my planner out, start to plan out my classes. We're going to talk through that. So under course information, you're going to see your instructor information. This is a picture from me at Walt Disney World a little earlier this year. Um, and your instructors uh, may provide pictures, they may provide videos, all that sort of thing. Some of them won't, but that we try to make this as personal as we can. Um, again, a link to that student resources button that we saw over there in the resources area. And then we get into two things where I think you should spend quite a bit of time um, here at the beginning of the semester, which is your syllabus and your calendar. Now, syllabus, if you're new to college or haven't been around college for a while or haven't been around school for a while, syllabus may be kind of a funny word for you. So let me open this up so you can see it, um, and then we will talk about what it is. Make sure that opens properly so you all can see that. And it looks like it's up now. So a syllabus is um, sort of a contract between students and instructors. It is a document that the instructor creates and um, provides to you as a student that lays out all of the course requirements, all of the course rules and policies, um, all of the grading information, everything that you need to know um, about sort of how the class is going to work is going to be contained in the syllabus. We provide our instructors with, an, with a syllabus template. Um, they don't they don't all use it, but most of them do, many of them do, so a lot of your syllabi are going to look like the document that I'm showing you today. Um, and the same thing with your course. We provide faculty with a course template. We ask that they use it. So many of the courses that you're going to see are going to look very similar to the course I'm showing you today. Um, so the course syllabus begins, again, with that contact information. Um, I'm obviously, again, this is a sample, so I'm using some fake information here. Um, but you, again, see the information for the help desk that 888 Ivy Line option four, as well as those links to create tickets if you want to do that, um, as well as you'll see um, our Ivy Tech online learning support person. So those folks that I introduced to you at the beginning who are helping to answer your questions in the question pod today, um, Shirley and Rhonda and Jennifer and Aaliyah, and they are joined by a cast of about 25 other people around the state. Um, one of those folks' contact information will be listed here on your syllabus, um, and they're a great resource if you're having trouble with your class, or you're not sure how to do something, they are a great resource to go to for that as well. In addition, we offer um, disability support services for students both online and on campus. So if you are a student who has a disability um, and needs um, assistance from a college for that disability, I would encourage you to um, take a look at the DSS page um, and follow the instructions there to make sure that you um, register with the DSS coordinator on your campus and can get the accommodations that you need for that class. We're committed to uh, helping you meet your educational goals and so really strongly encourage you to take or look at those resources if you um, have need of those services. We do, again, if, you, if our faculty members are using our standard syllabus, we have a nice uh, table of contents here. So if you print this out, it makes it a little quicker to flip through. Um, and then I'm going to just guide you quickly through a few of these sections. So the next section um, talks about our course outline. These are the things that you're going to learn this semester. If you're taking psychology for the first time, not sure what you're going to learn, uh, this lays that out for you. So here are the things that at the end of this class I'm going to be able to do when I successfully complete this class. Um, and then we go into our textbooks. And I know Kathy's going to put the link for um, our bookstore here in uh, the chat panel. But getting your textbooks is a really important step that you can take this week before classes start. Um, and in order to do that, um, you will need to get your schedule for your class and um, go in and order those books. And I'm just going to copy and paste that into the chat panel. Hopefully, there we go. Um, so there are those instructions um, about how to get your uh, information for your courses. And the bookstore website, which Kathy put that link in there, will have information about what book is available or what book is needed for your course. Now, we do have a couple of different programs where you paid for your um, books prior to the start of the semester, and they're actually going to be loaded in your course for you. One of those is called our Include Ed program. So if you look at your schedule or you look at your bill and you either see that you have a class that's labeled as Include Ed or that you paid an Include Ed fee, then that means one, of your, one or more of your courses, your materials are going to be in Blackboard when you get access on Friday. Um, 
the same thing is true. We have uh, uh, some courses called um, OER courses, Open Educational Resources. Again, you paid a small fee. It was a $10 fee for those materials in most cases. Um, and those materials will also be available for you. For both of those, you can buy if you want. Those are all digital materials. If you want a print book, you can order a print copy at, from the bookstore. You do not have to. You'll have a digital copy of the book in the class if you paid those fees for those courses. Um, but the majority of our courses now, you do need to order your books through the bookstore. That's a little different than previous semesters. We used to do a lot more include ed, but we're um, backed away from that just a little bit. So if you um, if you have not bought your books, that's a great thing to do yet this week. And I know if you have questions about that, the team will be um, uh, answering those in the question panel. All right. Uh, the next section of our syllabus has our college policies in it. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at these, read them carefully so you understand that some instructors will um, add on to these. You'll see this as sort of a base level policy. Some will um, add on additional things with that. Again, we have the link to our disability support services as well as um, Blackboard's accessibility um, for students in case you need information about that. Then we get into information specific to our course policies and procedures. So we have um, specific information about the courses, and I, I encourage you to read this. They're going to be a little different for every class. So you need to read it carefully for each class and sort of get straight in your head what the differences are. Um, but I'm going to reinforce with you the due date issue. All of our online classes have due dates. These are not courses where you can work sort of as you want and turn in things that you're at the end of the class on your own. You need to turn in things by the due date every single week. We also typically um, do not have a makeup policy in place for online classes. So you are expected to get the work done um, even if sort of life is happening around you. Um, our faculty will work with you. Um, if they know things ahead of time. So we have had students um, who have uh, had babies during the semester, got married, gone on big trips, all those sorts of things. And many, most of our faculty will work very well with you as long as you communicate with them in advance so that they understand uh, what, you, what you need and how they can accommodate that and work with you. Okay. A um, couple of really important things as we get down into the syllabus here. Um, first of all is how attendance is taken in an online class. You may think, well, if I logged in, I'm there. That is not true. Just logging in is not enough. In order to be counted for attendance in an online class, you have to actually turn something in. So it's not even enough that you clicked around on links in the class or anything like that. You have to complete an assignment. So whether it is a discussion board post that you post or a quiz that you take or an assignment that you turn in, in order to be counted for attendance, you must, must, must turn something in. And it is very, very important that you do that early in the first week of the class, otherwise you will get dropped for non-attendance. Um, and in most cases, for our 16-week classes, so for the full semester-long classes, that date is normally going to be the first Friday of the semester, so I think it's August 27th this year. Um, for eight-week classes, if you have a first eight-week class, so one that will end in October, that date is usually by Tuesday or Wednesday of the first week of classes. So be very, very careful and make sure that you pay attention to that and you get something done in that first week of class. The next section of the syllabus goes into whether or not you need to come to campus for a class. And why you might need to do that is if the course uses what are called proctored exams. And I'm going to minimize the syllabus here for just a second, and I'm going to take you out and show you a couple of things. A proctor is someone who monitors you or watches you while you're taking an exam. They'll check your ID. They will make sure that you're only using the resources you're supposed to use for that exam. So these are going to be exams where you're not going to be able to use a book or notes or things like that uh, in, in most cases. And they will make sure that you take that exam per those requirements. If you live in Indiana, um, we have uh, testing centers at almost every single one of our campuses. And you can use those testing centers for free. And we have a link here at the bottom of this page, of the main Blackboard page, um, for find, test, proctor, and site information. This will go over sort of everything you need to know about proctoring. 
um, as well as how you could take a course from home or your office if you wanted to. I know we had a student earlier in the question panel who said they were in, no in Nevada. We don't expect you to fly here to take your exams. Um, you can uh, use our ProctorU service. There is a small fee for that, um, but it is also a great service, and that will allow you, if you have a webcam and a microphone, a live person will monitor you from your home or office while you're taking your exam. So that's a great option. I've had a lot of students tell us, um, that with child care and um, maybe parent care or just scheduling and those sorts of things, um, the cost of ProctorU is pretty low. It's, it's less than $30 for a, th for a three-hour exam, um, depending on just sort of time. That's how they're, they're scaled out. It's a great resource, and you don't have to get babysitter, and you don't have to get, uh, you don't have to drive to campus, and all those sorts of things. Um, so it may be a great resource for you to check out. So if you live here in Indiana, you have both options available to you. If you're outside of Indiana, highly recommend ProctorU for you um, as a great proctoring option. I am in the wrong class. Hang on just a sec. Let me get back in the right class. Click the wrong link. Um, there we go. Sorry about that. And I'm going to go back into my syllabus. So again, we were talking about the proctored exam session. Not all of your courses will have proctored exams, um, but the, in those that do, that's really important information. And we go over again, all of that's in the syllabus. Everything I've just talked about is detailed in the syllabus. Then we get into the section around course communication, and I want to talk about this for just a second. Um, our instructors are committed to responding to you within 36 hours, um, including weekends and holidays. Now, a couple of things that are going to help you get an answer to your question that you have for your instructor as quickly as possible. And the first one is to be really specific with your instructor about what your question is. Um, first of all, it's a great idea to remind them what course you're in because there's one of them and sometimes as many as 150 of you that they are assigned to this semester. So specifically at the beginning of the semester, help them out and remind them which section that you're in um, and sort of what section you're looking at and what course you're looking at and what item you're looking at. And then be really specific with your question. Tell them what you've done and where you are uh, struggling so that they can answer that. Let's talk about that in terms of time management as well. Your instructor has 36 hours to respond to you. For a lot of our online classes, your assignments are due on Sunday night um, at 11.59 at p.m. So let's say that you had a bad week and for some reason you didn't get to your work until Saturday. Question for your instructor um, on Saturday and you don't come up, you don't realize you have a question until about 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Um, that means the instructor doesn't even have to respond to you and may not be scheduled to respond to you um, until sometime in, on Monday. And so it's really, really important when you think about your time management for online courses that you build in enough time for yourself to be able to get your questions answered as well. Um, that's why if my due day is on Sunday for an online class, I actually like to have my work all done by Friday. Um, first of all, it gives me the weekend to do other things and maybe start getting prepped for the next week of my class and work on that. Um, but I like to work just a little bit ahead and get myself a few days ahead so that I am always uh, right on top of things in my online class. Um, when your instructors are communicating with you, they will use a variety of communication methods. And this is something we get a little bit of complaint about from students. They really wish all faculty would use messages or all would use email. Um, but your instructors are working really hard to make sure that you can reach them in a lot of different ways. So some of them will give you messages, some of them email, some of them will give you phone numbers, so some of them will text with you. Uh, use Twitter. So they're using all sorts of different different ways to allow you to get access to them and to answer you as quickly as possible. So I would encourage you to read this section of the syllabus very carefully for each instructor and realize that every person, whether it's your instructors here or out in the work world, is going to want to be communicated with in a lot of different ways. Um, I'm not a phone call person, me personally. So while you can call me, it's not the easiest way to get a hold of of a text messaging, emailing kind of person. Um, so everybody's a little bit different. I would encourage you to take this as an opportunity as you're working with different instructors to just practice that work skill and that life skill. Many of you already know that from your work world, um, but those of you that maybe this is your first time uh, getting into college and starting to explore the world of work as well, it's a great skill for you to learn as well. 
at this time. So again, your instructor will detail out their communication here. The last section of our syllabus goes into um, a, de a description of all of the assignments and how you're graded in the course. This is going to be completely different from course to course. So really spend a lot of time looking at this. You can see there are a lot of different types of assignments in this course. It lays out how all the points work, all of those sorts of things. Um, it talks about optional versus required, all of those things. So it's really important that you spend some time on this um, taking a look at it and understanding it. This also forms the foundation. I'm going to close the syllabus here and I'm going to go over to my course calendar. This starts to form the foundation of how you plan your time each week. Um, and that you can do, I went back into my course, I went to course information, apologize, I'm scrolling around just a bit here. Um, I went into course information and then I went down to my course calendar. The second thing I do after I read through the syllabus, you know, probably Friday or Saturday, again, kind of life I have, um, is I would take my calendar, and whether you use a Microsoft Outlook, a digital calendar, or whether you use a paper calendar, either way works for me. I don't care. I just want you to use something. Um, I would note down all my due dates in the calendar, so I have everything recorded in there, because for me, if it's not on the calendar, it doesn't happen. So I note them all down in my calendar, and then I would also block time out in my calendar to actually work on the course. Um, for some of you, that may seem like overkill. That may just not be how your life works, but in my life, it's so busy. That's how I have to do it if I want to be successful in a class. So I would actually reserve specific time each week um, to work on my discussion board posts, to work on my reading for the course, to work on my quizzes for the course, um, and plan that out. Again, if my due date is the 28th, if that's the due date in the course, I would actually try to have my work done by the 26th or even the 25th, that's the first week, so that hopefully I can work a little bit ahead for next week and get myself a little ahead. First week's a great time to get ahead. The fourth week is not a great time to be behind. So something to think about as you're planning. Work a little bit ahead this week if you can um, so that you are, you've got some good momentum behind you and you're, you're continuing on in the course successfully. All right, so each one of these sessions that's here on my calendar is tied to a session over in class sessions. And that's where we're going to go now to actually see how that part of a course works. So I'm going to go over to class sessions. And you'll notice they were called sessions over on the uh, calendar. They're called sessions here. I have session one that I need to do. Um, and so there's, again, a lot of reading here. So I'm going to do a lot of reading of this information. I love the way this course is laid out. It's laid out in steps. So I'm going to read it down sequentially um, and then take a look at step number one, pretty clear. And I'm going to read through this information, take a look at it, um, and then it looks like step two is to watch this video. So I'm going to watch the video. And again, we've got closed captioning provided on that video if we need it. Step number three, it looks like I've got a quiz to take in here. So I'm going to go do that. I've actually already taken that one, so I'm going to take the one in step four here in a second. And then step four, now if you think about this, I'm just scrolling through this, not in real time at all. Um, this would take some time. There's a reading for each one of these. There's a video to watch. There's additional resources. This is probably about an hour per step. And that's one of the questions we always get is how much time do I need to spend for my online class? Um, I am a really good student and I'm a really fast reader. So for me, the absolute minimum I would schedule out for myself is six hours a week for a, a regular three credit hour class, at least to get started, at least until I see what the workload feels like, how the course feels to me, those sorts of things. If you're not a fast reader or maybe reading's not your comfort level, um, maybe you're not as comfortable as a writer and you need to build in more time for yourself to get people to edit your work, um, all of those things you need to take into consideration, you may need to book more time. I've, I've had students tell me they book 8, 10, 12 hours a week for a class. So you're going to need to think about that, but definitely schedule no, at least six hours for yourself for that first week for each of your online classes that you're taking. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at how a couple of these actual tools work here. So we're going to take a look first at a quiz. Um, I love these quizzes um, in this class, in this psychology class, because uh, they're real short, so they're easy to use for demos like this. Um, but they also are a great example of where many of our faculty build in opportunities for you to practice on something. Um, and so this is a course that allows multiple attempts. That means you can try it multiple times. In this specific one, um, I can take it as many times as I want. And, 
10 points. Those are free points that I'm getting. I have to, I have to get the question right eventually, um, but I can take it as many times as I want until I get the, the question right. Some of our quizzes only allow one attempt, some allow two or three. So do read that really carefully, but don't leave points sitting out there um, that you don't need to leave sitting out there. If you can get, if you can take the quiz three times and get a better score, take the quiz three times and get a better score. Think about that in terms of your time management, though, again, too. You have got to be able to have time to take that quiz three times. So if you don't log in until Sunday afternoon at 6 p.m. and you've got to be somewhere by 8 for an hour-long quiz, that's not going to work for you if you can take it three or four times. So think about that in terms of your time management to make sure you're planning for yourself to be able to be successful. All right. Once I'm in the quiz, um, it's pretty straightforward. These are just multiple choice, but we have a lot of different question types you might see, like matching and essay and those kinds of things. Um, one thing on the timer, we have a lot of students who say that the timer kind of freaks them out a little bit. Um, this is five questions in 15 minutes. You're probably okay, but if time freaks you out, my favorite tip, take a post-it note, slap it over the screen uh, where that uh, timer is, and the timer will not be showing to you anymore. Um, and that way it won't freak you out if you don't need to. Um, I'm just going to go through here really quickly and um, answer these questions, and I am not reading them, so when my score comes up and I get a zero again, we're not going to judge me on that. So uh, I'm going to save and submit, say that I was done, and there's a little uh, thing here that says after I finish my quiz, it'll say click OK to view my results. So I'm going to do that really quickly. And we can see that I once again got one out of five. I was trying to get at least two right today. Um, this is what happens to you when you guess. Don't guess. Um, one out of five right. And you can see I'm getting a lot of feedback here. This is, these are really well um, done quizzes where you can see a lot of different feedback. I could go now back into my notes, back into my book, and look up the answers to the questions that I got wrong. And again, take that quiz again and get all five points out of it um, so that I'm getting as many points as I can for my score. So this is a, a great option for you. Now, once I click that quiz and it's gone, how do I go back and check my grades again? I can do that via the grades link over here on the left-hand side. And uh, it was still on that submitted page. You can see I'm now up to a whole two points in this class. <laughs> I'm not doing so well. And you can see down here, here are my uh, quizzes that I've taken. This uh, step one uh, session one, step four is the one I just took. If I click on it again, it doesn't look like I can actually see my score again. Here is another really important quick tip for you. You can see the score and see the quiz again by coming over here and hovering over the grade, clicking on that, and that will take you in so that you can see the quiz again. Now, not all courses and not all quizzes will allow that, but if it's available to you, that's how you can always get back into your grade. Okay. So that's one type of thing you're going to be doing this semester. You're going to be doing quizzes. Another type of thing you'll be doing this semester are our discussion boards. And let's take a look at one of those. Uh, we're going to go take a look at our introduction discussion board. And you can see there's already a student, that would be me, who has posted here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, post a new one. So I'm going to pretend that I'm somebody else today and post a new one. To post a new thread, you use the Create Thread button up here at the top. And I can type put in an email message or anything like that. Now, a note on that. Um, I say just like an email message, but I don't know how you email um, to the people you normally email with, but I'm going to remind you that this is academic communication. So, and you guys have actually been doing a really fantastic job of it in the question pod today. We've got a lot of questions that have come in with good capitalization, good punctuation, things are spelled well. You've obviously uh, done a good job of writing those things, and I've seen a lot of that today. Um, but um, we also emails that come in and have things like um, BTW or IMO for In My Opinion. That's not appropriate in most cases in academic writing. So the writing you're going to do in Blackboard, most of the time it's going to be formal academic writing. So I'm going to do that really quickly. Hello again from Kara Monroe. It's a very one-sided conversation in this class. And I would type my message in here. This allows me to do bold, italic, underline, all of those things. I can also add in uh, YouTube videos. I can add attachments, um, all of those sorts of things if I need to. Um, but I will just type a quick message. Kathy is reminding me that I have about five minutes left. So I uh, need to cruise on through that. Um, but we do encourage you to add photos, videos, anything like that that you want to to beef up your discussion posts. That's why those features are there. And when you're done, you hit Submit, 
and I can see that my new message has been posted above my old one. If you're reading the messages from other students, part of what you'll be required to do in most of your classes is read and reply to your other student colleagues. Um, I'm going to go back to my post from last night. You can see um, I'm having a little conversation with myself over here, and I can join in that conversation that I'm already having with myself and reply to that and type another message. This is a message from today's Wednesday. There you go and hit submit. You would add something substantive and actually important, but for purposes of demonstration, hopefully you guys get the idea from that. Um, and then you would continue on with your discussions. You can see that there are um, quite a few discussions here in this course. The discussions uh, are laid out. This course uses a lot of discussion, and they're actually really um, pretty intensive. So courses vary on terms of the intensiveness of the discussions, but I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, as you're getting comfortable with your class. And finally, the other type of assignment that I'm going to show you is an actual assignment. And so this is if you would need to uh, create something like a paper or maybe a PowerPoint presentation or an Excel spreadsheet file or something like that. So it's something that you're going to create um, on your computer and save it. And then you're going to come in here and you're going to submit it. So I'm going to go over to my intro paper here that I've added for myself. I can see it's due September 9th. I'm really early on this. And um, there are a couple of options. The first option is to write your submission right here. I don't recommend that. Um, what I actually recommend is that you create it in Microsoft Word or something like that. Save it on your computer. Save it in the cloud, wherever you save your work and then attach it like you would an attachment to an email message. And you do that using the attach file option here. And that's what I'm going to show you. So I've already created my document. I'm going to browse my computer here. And um, I am going to grab the tips for success. That is one of the handouts that you have this semester. And I'm going to hit submit. And um, it is hopefully converting it. What should happen um, once the conversion is done is you would actually see the document that you uploaded uh, right here in the submission area on the screen. Um, and a student's asking, why is it better to attach rather than writing it there? And that's a great question. A um, couple of reasons. The first reason is, is Microsoft Office allows you to do more formatting, or Google Docs, whichever one you perhaps use. Um, more formatting, it has better spell checking, all of those sorts of things. The more important reason, in my opinion, though, is it allows you to save a copy of that to your computer or to your cloud, wherever you save your work, so that you, A, have it if something happens. Like this makes me a little questionable, but why is it uh, not going, uh, going in uh, to the system? Um, but also, it allows you to refer back to it later after this class ends uh, when you lose access to this class so you can look at it again. I have all the work I've ever done in my classes uh, way back through the span of history. So that is, um, that is how you submit an assignment. And um, that concludes sort of our quick tour of Blackboard and your courses um, and a quick how-to of how you use things in Blackboard. We are going to hang out here um, for just a little while and answer any questions for you that you may have. I know some of you have to exit right at 2.30. If you can stay for just a couple of minutes, I do want to show you our tutor.com, which is a free tutoring service. So I'm going to walk through that now. Um, but if you do have to exit the webinar, you can, but we're still going to be here for a little while answering questions, and I'm going to walk through one more thing with you. We're running just a couple minutes behind today. Um, and tutor.com can be accessed, um, again, from the My Blackboard 9-1 page, so it can be accessed from that front page in Blackboard. And um, it's usually going to be located right in the center of the screen. And to access it, I just click the Connect button, and it's going to open up a window um, so that I can see the tutor.com screen. Once I'm in tutor.com, I have a couple of different options for getting tutoring. First of all, this is tutoring that's done by a real human being on the other end of the computer somewhere. Um, they are fully qualified instructors and tutors. Um, and these folks are available to help you um, with any of the subjects that are listed here in this list. So accounting, anatomy, biology, chemistry, econ, English, history, math, uh, political science, psychology, our office administration courses, science, and Spanish. Um, so you could choose one of those and um, open, hit the connect now, and that would open up to let our, our tutors know that you have a question and they would be available to help you. 
Um, we also offer a couple of different writing resources. So even if you're not in one of those classes, if you have to write a paper, which in college most of you are going to have to write a few papers, um, we have a writing center where you can get live help with the writing process um, or a drop-off essay review if you've written a paper or you're in the process of writing it and you want somebody to review a part of it, you can use the drop-off essay review um, to get access to um, a a review of your document within 24 hours. So again, from the time management perspective, um, you need to think about if you want to use the tutor.com drop-off essay review, you've got to build in an extra 24 hours for the tutor to review it, and then probably six or eight hours for, your, for you to review their feedback and adjust based on that. Um, so another great resource for you to use. Uh, all of it's free. We do have a, a limit of 15 hours, and you'll see, um, every time you log in, you'll see how many hours you have remaining. Um, you get 15 hours per semester to use with tutor.com, and um, if you do need more hours than that, though, you can just call, again, you can call the Answer Center, the 188-IV line. Just follow the prompts and let them know that you need more tutoring hours. They're going to ask you some questions about what other resources you might be using or those sorts of things, but then um, they will uh, put you through to us to get you more hours if you need to. All right? So apologies we went a couple minutes uh, past time, but want to thank you for attending today, and we do have folks who are going to be here for just a few more minutes answering questions in the question pod. Um, and uh, we thank you for attending and wish you the best of luck this semester.